Hello there. Welcome to the latest data radio show. I'm still not feeling 100%, so I'm going to do the same trick we did last week where we pulled an interview out uh, to learn a little bit more about something exciting. This week, Sam is going to sit down and have another chat with Shung Lan, the chief data scientist from Tech Data. And they're going to talk about uh, generative AI moving beyond simple process automation. And they use a use case here around internal HR assistance, where the data that gets created is based on a whole bunch of rules that are set in place by the HR department, and how that can become much more interactive in creating data that's actually adaptable and usable for people at the receiving end of it. So let's jump straight in. I'll leave it over to Sam and Shung. And they'll be able to guide you through absolutely everything that's going on. So in today's use case, we want to highlight how generative AI is providing an opportunity to go beyond process automation. This is an example of an HR assistant um, that enables the answering of routine questions around internal HR policies and entitlements. Historically, this might be information provided to you by a portal or some sort of support desk. Uh, what we're going to see with generative AI is the ability to go beyond pure information access. It's possible to interact with the data to provide real-time uh, calculations and estimates, along with the possibility of interactive modeling different scenarios uh, in conversation with uh, the GPT. So uh, that means that you can make a choice um, based on some of those modeled scenarios just as you might do in conversation with somebody else. Um, this is an emerging uh, class of applications that's enabling greater autonomy versus just pure process automation, meaning that the workforce can interact with data sets, policies, and procedures to autonomously work out how they might make the best choice for their current set of circumstances. So, uh, Shung, give us a, a brief introduction to foundation models or large language models. Yeah, for, for foundation model is like a broader concept. For example, ChatGPT is uh, part of this foundation model. I think to compare the foundation model at our traditional machine learning or AI models, the biggest difference is it significantly changed the way we develop AI models. So before, for a specific task, we need to collect massive data. For example, we do sentiment analysis. We do this uh, entity extraction, do uh, text classification. All these three tasks, we need a specific massive training data to train the model to do that. But with foundation model, we can use that as literally as good solid foundation for almost any data format and for this all the different tasks. We just use one foundation model and use some fine tune to deliver the project. That benefit will be fast to deployment and also give us equal or even better performance. So that is the foundation model and how change the AI model development. So thinking about that, um, Shung, on the, the left here, uh, yeah. you've got your traditional models where it it appears to be a sort of linear relationship between training and tasks. Is that yep. fair to say? Yes, exactly. And then on the on the right hand side, you've got uh, just just walk us through um, how it works in this scenario. Yeah, on on this first side, foundation model side. So as a the input, we can see there can be different data format. It can be uh, structured data, uh, code data or video, music, audio data. So it, all this data can fit into this foundation model. And from here, the foundation model, we have two way to use this to make it uh, adjustment for our specific task. One is we call prompting, uh, similar to how we interact with ChatGPT. We ask questions, we got answers from the data. The other way will be for more complex tasks like code generation, or we need to handle some uh, um, video um, recognition or computer vision capability, that will need us to do some fine tuning. That will need a relatively small set of training data, labeled data, to modify the foundation model, then give us a 
response. So that is the second way to use this foundation model. But overall, you can see this is based on this foundation model instead of uh, many different models for a specific task. Great. Uh, I think that, that um, well, at least it makes sense to me. So um, being more of a layman than yourself. Um, so I guess uh, we've seen that foundation models such as ChatGPT or generative AI have significantly changed the way we build AI applications. So you don't need to... Call, oh, <laughs> I'm reading your script. Um, I got myself confused there. So blah, 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 blah. I think you've actually said that. Right. So we're going to talk about hallucinations. Um, so one of the things that comes up, uh, quite often, uh, Shung is this, this issue around hallucinations and generative AI. Uh, so talk us through what is a hallucination yep. and, um, you know, I understand that there might be some scenarios where a hallucination is actually a good thing not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. So for hallucination, in simple term is this generative AI response, the content seems right, but it's not fact-based. So basically it's, it's wrong. For example, maybe you ask ChatGPT, write your LinkedIn profile. It will give you a, a great uh, background, great education background, but actually maybe that is not all the experience is uh, is your experience. So that is like hallucination. Um, that, but uh, another point here is this is a fact-based. If we want some answer is a fact-based and we'll make decision on that fact, the hallucination is not, not good. We don't want, we, we try to reduce hallucination in that scenario. But the other scenario, maybe we, we look into hallucinations, maybe the, the need for, for art, for creative, so that part, we will see hallucination as a feature instead of a disadvantage to do this task. And in, in business scenario, most of the case we need, the answer is accurate and based on the fact, since we need to make decisions to run our business. So in more uh, enterprise use case, we try to reduce hallucination and also try to provide more transparency to give um, to let the users know what what really happened at the back on back end, how you generate this response to make generative AI more useful or money more benefit for your business. Excellent. So um, I, I guess uh, this is probably as good a place as any to to start talking about the actual uh, use case. Let me yep. uh, bring that up. So I think this is the right thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, so for this use case, um, we use this HR assistant as an example. And as we mentioned, there is a hallucination and a lack of transparency when we use generative AI. So in this use case, we, um, we use a framework called uh, RAJ, which is Retrieval Augment Generative. Basically, we um, provide the context to, uh, to model and ask the model to generate response based on the data we provided instead of uh, use this uh, out-of-the-box data uh, within large language model. The other thing we, we have here is we um, give uh, generative AI some, some tool like do the mass calculation and also to do some data manipulation to uh, to co connect with a data file or connect the database to actually uh, get the real data instead of the fake data. So here we can see on the screen that on the right side is our um, UI for the chatbot. And on the left side will be the data we provided. Uh, here is this uh, employee data. We have employee ID, employee uh, name, and other information 
the bottom left here is this HR policy. So for now, it's a TXT file. We have all this um, internal policy. Then we will go to our uh, first um, questions here. So our first question, we will asking, um, my name is just general HR questions. We will asking, um, what is my employee ID? And of course, I will give my uh, name. Then we can see here uh, is where we know the chatbot to this reasoning uh, step. So we can see more detail after we uh, break down this reasoning step. The chatbot is smart enough to know, okay, in order to get my employee ID, I will need to search the employee data. So it generated a Python script to do this. And then I run this Python script automatically get this employee ID, which is uh, 100, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then we can have a quick check um, on the right side. Uh, we have, uh, if we can go to this uh, Excel, find this uh, Richard Santos. And we can see uh, the data is um, 100, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 as well. So that's good. That's mean the chatbot response accurate, um, accurate employee ID. Then the second question we're asking is, uh, how many vacations do I have left? So similar idea here, the chatbot will go to search the employee data to get this vacation left, which is a five days, as we can see in the CSV file. Then we go to the third question. Uh, this time we'll see more HR policy said. Uh, the question is, can I in cash my unused leave? The chatbot will be smart enough to know, okay, to answer this question, I need to search this HR policy. If we can, uh, if we do manual search uh, in this uh, TXT file, we can see uh, here is the in cashment policy and we're expecting the answer is yes. And also we got this yes answer. The last question we'll try is um, say if the chatbot can do some calculation um, based on the information. The question is how much I will get paid if I in cash my unused leave. Based on the previous response, we know we need to divide this uh, basic salary by 30 days, then multiply the number of unused leave. Uh, then we, uh, Similarly, we break down the information. We know the basic salary is 6,000. Then we divide by 30 and multiply 5. That gave us 1,000. That is um, how the chatbot uses information from this HR policy and do the calculation. And also, this view is for uh, user end user view. We don't need to show all that reasoning step. That is just for demo purpose and also gave us the option to audit the response. Uh, Sam, this is the uh, end for this demo. Um, any questions or comments? Uh, I, I guess what I'm what I'm curious about in in all of this, uh, Sean, is what are some of the differences between the uh, old models and the new models in terms of how you pull something like this together? So for this uh, main difference here is um, compared, I, I did a similar project, HR assistant, uh, when I was a consultant in the US. So we the idea is the same, to answer HR uh, questions. And we have a team uh, Special, specialized on different skills. Like we have a software developer, we have this dialogue flow designer, and also we have this um, business analyst to design the dialogue flow. For, for that, it take us 16 weeks. But for now, with this generative AI, I think generative AI can kind of like to help um, the team with less resource, since generative AI or large language model already have the equal or even better skills for design this uh, dialogue flow or identify the user um, intention. 
uh, with that uh, large language model, the team is actually be more capable to deliver this with less time. So we are seeing a 75% reduction on time to deliver and even better output before we have all this scope, like up to five journey for this one. But with large language model, theoretically, we can answer any questions um, from employee as long as that in HR policy and that is in the employee data. So that will be give us better performance and with less effort. Right, marvelous. Um, <clears throat> I guess my my last question uh, relates to uh, so we we're, we're seeing si significant uh, reductions in how long it takes to deliver value, yep. um, but going beyond just pure productivity benefits, how do you see? Uh, generative AI actually changing the nature of, of work and the, the nature of workflows. And, and I guess there's some hint of this uh, in relation to this HR assistant, where it's, it's moving from just a pure automation uh, uh, based on a decision tree to, to yeah. something more cognitively capable uh, delivering up employees greater autonomy in the workplace. Yeah, I think for uh, two perspective, one perspective is maybe from uh, myself as a developer. This only take me two days to do this entire demo. But before I may need some uh, business analyst help me to define this conversation flow, how to navigate users go through this journey. I may need some other uh, developer help me to uh, use this uh, uh, text classification to do this. But now with large language model, I think I'm become more capable to this to do this with myself. Of course, with the assistant from a generative AI. The other side will be the user who consuming this application, which is definitely more cognitive, more intelligent. And we all have the experience that chatbot doesn't understand what you are saying. But with this one, is I think it has been a matter of, is this answer relevant to me? Is answer is based on my data instead of a, does the chatbot understand my question? So it's a more opportunities, more capable for um, AI to help people to get HR inquiry instead of days, just a minute. And, and I guess there's the opportunity to model different scenarios uh, too uh, interactively. I think that's one of the use cases that I'm seeing emerge is um, scenarios where you need to be able to role play or learn about policies uh, and quiz people. So that there's, uh, I guess an example is in education but it, we're talking about workplace education. So yeah. in, a, in a situation where you maybe need to role play a particular thing like an HR dispute yep. of some sort or uh, learn about sales and the sales process, um, that's an emerging uh, scenario that I'm seeing for these generative AI exactly. agents. Yeah, again, back to the business scenario, even for people, we are specialized for some skills like marketing, sales, developing. For if we want to use AI or generative AI in our uh, daily work, we need specialized AI to better support us instead of the just AI general on everything, but not good or specialized on a specific area. Yeah, I, I guess it, we're seeing them move quite rapidly from being just a, a toy or a, an amusement to actually something that becomes useful. Yeah. All right, that's marvelous. Well, thanks so much for your time today, um, Sean. Yeah, thank you, glad to be here. Hey, thanks for tuning in to this week's Data Radio Show. Don't forget, it's free to tell everybody about this. You can like, share, subscribe, and it doesn't cost you a thing. If you want something else that's also free, you can go and check out our new online community over in school. There'll be a link down in the description below. 
it's completely free to come and join. It's designed really specifically with data management in mind to help people who might be just starting on their career or who are a little bit further down their path. There's a whole bunch of games and lessons and courses and all sorts of things that you can get involved in. You can collect points as you go along, level up. Who doesn't love to level up? And it's all completely free now available online in the link that is down in the description. Don't forget again to join us next week, but until then, have a fantastic week and may the force be with you.